from honing his skills during his bare knuckle boxing and street fighting days to completely revamping his brand at the end of his career. Let's take a look at what makes Jorge Masvidal one of the biggest stars in the UFC, starting with his insane skill set. Before ESPN sports analysts were looking at the slow motions of Masvidal's knockouts and calling him a top-tier boxer, he was fighting for as little as $40 in bets on the street with his friends. His talent for the sport was nothing short of extraordinary, and he was soon an internet sensation, courtesy of street fighting legend Kimbo Slice. There's a famous story of Jorge knocking out Kimbo's prodigy to earn his street fighting chops. And now that he's a trained fighter, we can see what makes him so effective in the boxing range. It's all in Gamebred's lead hand and lead leg working constantly to manage distance with his opponent by establishing the jab and the leg kick. Masvidal's jabs genuinely a thing of beauty, whether he's launching a stinger at the face or using it to set up longer, deadlier combinations. Criticism, people say the punches weren't really necessary. Maybe they were super necessary. Hiding the power hand behind the jabs, how he got some of his most impressive knockouts over the likes of Donald Cerrone and Darren Till. MMA's all about mixing up those techniques, and Jorge's made a career out of perfecting a couple of vintage techniques he can finish fights with. Be it the left hook to the face or the body, or the devastating switch kick to the body, they all flow so naturally from game bread that any number of combinations becomes available for the Cuban fighter. But it, the referee hadn't pulled me off. And my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off. So to those people, I would say, maybe don't watch him and maybe go back to soccer. Fighter. There's a fluidity in Masvidal's striking that only comes from a lifetime of fighting. And that's exactly what he has under his belt. After all, the Cuban has racked up over 50 professional fights. MMA fighters will often have extensive amateur careers before making the professional switch. And then you rarely see a fighter going above 30 to 35 fights because there just isn't enough time during your athletic years. But street fighters are built different, and Masvidal's been fighting since he was 10 years old. I wouldn't be surprised if he has hundreds of amateur fights that nobody's ever heard of and he may be the only active fighter with over 50 professional bouts. With a career that's prolific, it's quite likely you fail a few times, and Gamebred has picked up 16 losses, 10 of which came inside the UFC. The experience this kind of career gives you is so invaluable that it's hard to explain sometimes. Just think that the first time Jorge won a fight in the UFC was way back when GSP and Matt Hughes were having their rivalry in the welterweight division. He may have been around for seemingly forever, but it was only a few years ago that Street Jesus really became an international superstar. A fighter has to reinvent himself and evolve with the sport if he's going to be there for over 15 years. Gamebred's a perfect example of how a fighter can increase his longevity or even start doing better as the years go on. I want to take this time on a personal Thank God Almighty for this journey, man. It's been an amazing journey. 16 years I've been doing this at this level. And Masvidal's often spoke about the conscious change in mentality central to his success. Before he started knocking top-tier fighters out left, right, and center, Masvidal wasn't nearly as exciting a fighter as he is today. He couldn't put together a long enough winning streak to make a serious challenge up the rankings, and finishes were getting difficult to come by. When he did get opportunities against big names like Steven Wonderboy Thompson and Damian Maya, he came up just short. Seriously, they were some of the closest fights I've seen, and even the unanimous decision losses didn't leave Gamebred damaged. He speaks about how annoying this whole experience with close losses was, especially because he knew he was better than the bums he was losing to. And that's when the switch flipped. Masvidal decided to stop trying to outpoint his opponent and began focusing on knocking them out. Success soon followed with Masvidal becoming the first to knock out the gorilla Darren Till and derailing quite a hot title run by Cowboy Cerrone. Soon, fans would be looking at the famous BMF belt the UFC seemingly made just for Jorge. But before he got there, Masvidal finally cracked the code for UFC stardom. If you knock people out and you talk good trash, success is going to follow. No better example of this exists for Jorge's career than his win over Ben Askren. Ben was coming off a controversial submission victory over Robbie Lawler in his UFC debut. And despite being a pretty nice guy, the fan base had developed a disliking for the former Bellator champion, and this automatically made Gamebred the favorite fighter. If not, I know somebody that knows somebody, so matchmaking, putting the venues together, is, it's like my dream job, you know? 
talk. The trash talking was pretty fun, and Jorge did a good job of convincing the world he genuinely disliked Askren. And what did he do about it? He scored the fastest knockout in UFC history by landing a flying knee three seconds into the fight. To this day, there's no list of top knockouts on the internet that doesn't have Ben Askren's stiff body acting as an exclamation point to Masvidal's skills. The change in fighting style was accompanied by a complete change in attitude as well. Gamebridge changed his fashion style, developed his mic skills, and adopted a much more ambitious attitude that landed him the BMF fight. Matching up against Nate Diaz is great for your career no matter how it goes down. But beating the Stockton Slugger the way Jorge did catapulted him to an almost legendary hype train that hasn't stopped to this day. Though when you talk about the best fighters in the UFC, things start to get tougher. Because Jorge doesn't have an answer to elite level wrestling inside the octagon. In the modern era, you can't really be a champion if you don't have a solid wrestling background or outstanding takedown defense if you're a striking specialist. Masvidal learned this the hard way a couple of times in his career, but the first lesson came at the hands of the man he'd been calling out for a while. Kamaru Usman's famed for his smothering wrestling and strength. It's what made him the most successful welterweight champion of all time, and he dominated Game Brit from start to finish. Now, I'm not saying Jorge doesn't have skills on the mat. He's been hanging around with the top dogs for years. But it's a different thing when you're fighting someone like Usman or Colby Covington. It won't matter how good a boxer you are because you can't knock someone out from your back. Jorge's current three-fight losing streak is, in my opinion, because he lacks the defense to keep elite guys off him long enough to fire some offense and his offensive wrestling so negligible to those opponents that his attacking plan becomes too predictable for them. I really hope he's been working on this stuff, guys, because his next opponent is a multiple-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion, and losing to Gilbert Burns may be the end of Masvidal's championship dreams. It's tragic that a fighter as skilled as Jorge Masvidal has never held a UFC championship, but he has one last shot if the stars align. His knockout loss against Usman in their rematch ended their rivalry for good, so he wasn't getting a third fight there no matter what he does. But now that Edwards is the champion, the possibility is there to make a snatch of the belt, especially with the history Masvidal has with Leon. I got nothing nice to say, so my mother told me if you don't got nothing nice to say, don't say it, so we're going to skip Ben questions. If he can get through Burns and challenge for the belt, his fighting style could win him the championship. Leon showed he could be hit later in the rounds against Nate Diaz, so fans know Masvidal has the striking advantage. But even against Leon, he'll have to tighten up that takedown defense and that clinch work. Well, folks, that's the breakdown of the first and last BMF champion, Jorge Masvidal.